Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm your host, Sean. That over there is Brian. And boy, howdy, are we happy to see you guys today here at the old ranch. Yeah, it's old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, man. Another week is fantastic to be here. Before we get into anything, guys, please remember to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the dislike button, leave us a comment. Just let us know what's going on, what you're doing, whatever. Uh, we don't give a shit. Just do, just do it, man. Just do it. Yeah, just pick up my slack, dude. That's right. Because <laughs> apparently I was slacking this week. I got, got distracted and didn't get around to, to checking out our vids you or didn't comments. Get to check or out the vid. Yeah, I was going to ask you, man. I was like, did you get to see it in its beauty and glory? It even looked good on my 65 inch TV. Oh, yeah. I, I fooled. I fooled the algorithm. Well, hell, actually, I mean, I, I, I rendered our videos out in 4K. Yeah. Uh, even though we're only recording with like 10K, I'm sorry, 1080p type resolution. Uh, yeah, I upscaled it. It's putting it out there at 4K, and um, it looked pretty good to me. And we Check fooled, on shenanigans. Yeah, we got the good, uh, the good codec. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah, so very that happy about out. that. Yep. So, uh, you know, I had mentioned a while back that Star Trek Legacy, I was worried, you know, that perhaps, well, well first of all, Paramount Plus is in, in pretty bad shape as far as financial situations go. They're yeah. looking to do whatever they can. I think they moved some of the Star Trek movies from Paramount Plus to uh, HBO Max. Well, they just call it Max now. I believe that's where they moved. They moved him somewhere. I believe it was Max. But. So uh, I've been like, man, I, you know, I just don't know what's going to happen with this. Well, so I came across this guy. Sidetrack is the name of his, his uh, YouTube um, channel. And apparently he has friends that work mainly, it sounds like mainly in an administrative capacity in some of these places. Mm -hmm. uh, like the studios and whatnot. So he's getting information that, that seems legitimate and credible. And he is apparently known for not, you know, spreading rumors that stuff he's brought up in the past has, you know, been spot on. So yeah. he's corroborated it with at least a couple people. And it sounds like that legacy's a done deal, no matter what, like all they've got to figure out is who's paying for it basically right. and i said the exact same thing this this feels so much just like when um before strange new worlds actually became a thing because i kept saying like it, it was it was the similar rumors were around at that time like oh it's not really gonna happen i think even maybe people in the production you know uh company or whatever were like no it's not gonna happen so I was like, I just doesn't seem likely to me. And I, I made the case back then. They, of course, you know, they, this was all in discovery when this was going on the discovery, uh, series. And they brought in the, the captain Pike and his crew in. you had a new enterprise model and all that beautiful stuff. But you, what you also had this beautiful fucking enterprise set and you cast a very well-known actor in the lead to play commander Pike. Uh, sorry, Captain Pike, and uh, you've got uh, oh, what's her name? Um, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I, well, I keep thinking of the dude from Full House because I know he'll <laughs> lead me there, right? Um, it's his ex, the guy from Full House, and I can't even think yeah. of his name now. Stamos. Yeah, Stamos's ex. What was her freaking name? Jesus, dude. Rebecca, Rebecca Romaine. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> same guy. Got it. Jinx. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Rebecca Romain. I mean, that's a major cast right there to play number one. That was great. So they had they and they had other. They had a couple. Oh, well, the guy that plays Spock, right? That I mean, like he's not a major known actor, but like uh, that's a major role to cast just to bring Spock back in any you know capacity. And, and I think he's doing well. You think he's doing well? Yeah, absolutely. I would agree wholeheartedly. I like him way better than Zachary Quinto. Agreed. Very much so. Um, I don't know. There was this thing about Zachary. Zachary's got like a little bit of just kind of a, a weirdness 
exuding out of him and that was kind of fitting for the role but i do prefer yeah and having having had a taste of both i definitely prefer this guy this newer guy so uh yeah i just said man there's just no fucking way this show is a done deal it's a done deal and i went back to the same fucking things happening with legacy now you got you got uh, a major actress that came back uh, so, uh, Jody, uh, sorry, Jesus, Jerry Ryan comes back to play, uh, seven of nine and you're giving her a brand new vehicle, literally <laughs> and figuratively, yeah. uh, to, to star in. That's a huge deal. You've got this brand new ship, this brand new, beautiful set that you just built. I mean, it's exactly the same thing and it's exactly the same. Oh, it's not going to happen. Something's going to happen. Well, I believe I don't. I, I I wanted to say this as Star Trek Legacy is confirmed, but I'm going to pull back on that just a little bit because it's not exactly etched in stone. I mean, this guy was saying that Paramount basically has an agreement in principle with Amazon to pay for basically what Paramount couldn't or didn't want to. They right. uh, it sounds like the production company is fully behind and Paramount is fully behind legacy like this is going to be made it's just a matter like i said of how it gets paid for so let's say the amazon thing it it, it's not necessarily an inked deal but it's a deal in principle so almost there and if that were to fall through then i guess there you know there's other options out there I've always wondered whether or not paramount was going to make it in the end uh there's a lot of great paramount ip right not just the star trek stuff but movies in general some other series yeah um but you know going up against stuff like amazon for example you know especially post-covid it was kind of like you know there's there just wasn't enough right yeah um and i kind of feel like they're not alone in that boat uh so i guess we'll see yeah we will and I think they'll figure something out. I mean, like, dude, check. So these are the kind of things you're here that are about to take place. So this and the um, Alex Kurtzman production mm-hmm. company, uh, it's called Secret Hideout right now. But they're about they to change call its it name. Previously on, right? What's that? They should just call it Previously yeah, on. Previously on. That, <laughs> that I'm surprised somebody should have done that already. Um, but yeah, they're they're changing the the name of that production company in the next twelve months to Star Trek Productions. Right. So if that doesn't clue you in that they're all keyed up to churn some stuff out, um, as always, I guess it's just for a lack of money. So they this Picard movie now rears its head as as we've already uh, discussed that that came out of uh, Patrick Stewart's mouth mm-hmm. a couple of weeks back. We mentioned that, and now it's getting brought up again because there might be kind of a, a timeline where it fits in with the whole new uh, legacy series. Like, so you'll have right. a legacy that comes out and then the Picard movie would come out on probably maybe prime for a fee. And then after a couple of weeks on prime come out on per, uh, Paramount plus for free. And then like maybe section 31 that movie falls in there somewhere who knows yeah. you know it could be part of the whole deal it might be a whole standalone thing uh i don't know whether i'm disappointed that that's not a series or not i'm all for more, more for series than anything else uh this is the same could be said of some of the star wars stuff like ben the obi-wan should definitely be more of a series than right a movie you know it was originally going to be a movie i think it would be better as as it is you know well, I don't know. And I guess that's the big question is always, you know, how much meat is on the bone, right? Mm-hmm. Can can you turn it into multiple seasons? Can yeah. it be like an Obi-Wan type situation? Can it be a, a movie or two? Right. Uh, or a trilogy. Um, but I don't know. I, I honestly think there's a lot to do with how how much people want to commit to, you know, that IP, that one thing. Yeah. Well, they certainly have a lot they can pick from and create from. But uh, it it sounds like Paramount is very high on Terry Metallus continuing to be the showrunner of the series, of all series. And why not, right? Yeah. Yes, please. 
<laughs> yeah. Please, more Terry Metalis. He knows Trek in the way we want the, it to be handled. Uh, and it's been, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. Brian, um, yet, I'm not going to remember the last name. The guy that kicked off Discovery, you know, it probably would have been so much better had it been his original vision. Um, he ended up leaving early. I can't think of his oh. last name. It's Brian mm. something. He's done a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. But anyway, so... Uh, Jonathan Franks is apparently all over, you know, to be the, the director. I mean, like, the go-to guy for handling most of the directing on on this stuff. Which, and I like what he did in the previous uh absolutely the card season, right? Yeah. I mean I like that stuff. A but, couple of those. Yeah, he's been he's been directing episodes since back in, you know, T and G days. He was yeah. always one you knew was just that's what he was gonna do after. And he right. has. He's continued to do all different manner of shows and uh and I like what he's doing. And they it sounds like dude they are building like the dream team we had back in the day. And some of them are actually guys from back in the day. And that's awesome because I think that really is going to root things into, I, they, they, with discovery, the way it started out, they had to retool it in the second season and again, in the third season. And, you know, it just couldn't find itself because it didn't have the right people involved in it. You know, yeah. they kept trying to change. Oh, well, this ain't working. We're throwing the whole, you know, crew out or pulling a whole new crew in and shit. Just, you can see well, how it doesn't work. It's funny to look back on on the history of these types of shows because uh, on the one hand, it ends up kind of like the Gal Galaxy Quest type thing, you know? It's yeah. like cons and like you're kind of looked down upon by serious actors or whatever. Right. And now everybody just wants to work and to have, you know, this as a as a vehicle is, is just like a godsend for a number of people. And it doesn't, you know, you could be as serious as you want to, but if you're not getting you know, constant work, then who cares? Yeah. And on top of that, they they now know that cons make them stupid money too. So, yeah. You know, they're, they're more than happy to have this career, right? Or, or let's say it's just one or two shows and then they don't have nothing else really after that, man. At least they have that to fall back on. Cause there's I put plenty. a lot of, yeah, I put a lot of that on Comic-Con. Yeah. No doubt. That was kind of yeah. like the workhorse for that. They have brought it to the mainstream. No doubt about yeah. it, man. Uh, Though many of us have pushed hard and fought as pioneers, <clears throat> but yeah, man, I'm I I'm saying it, man. It's all but a done deal. Star Trek Legacy. It probably be it will probably be uh, late 2025 when we see something yeah. at the end of the 2025 years. So don't look for it anytime soon. But certainly, hopefully, maybe some announcements and at least a teaser trailer or something. Maybe some BTS stuff here and there. Whatever it takes, man. Little yep. little tease, little tease. Anyway, um, I also previously had intimated that there may be a new Cyberpunk update coming update. down the pipe. We had thought that 2.1 was it, you know, or many speculate. I don't know if they're ever going to stop, dude, because now we have 2.11, right. which is out of necessity really from 2.1 who uh, absolutely butchered a bunch of code and messed a lot of things up yeah uh, it fixes a fair bit of it yeah you know, not everything is fixed some people aren't even sure if it's if some things are even bugs you know or if they were just meant to be you know nerfed basically i guess right for lack of a better word um balanced yeah there isn't really anything I could throw out there and tell you that's that I know is fixed. I know the one thing that does stand out in my mind was the the neon wheels on that bike. Mm -hmm. They they now glow again. Yay! Okay, <laughs> which is awesome, dude. Really, actually, that of all the stuff, that was like the coolest thing. I I was think that I would have missed. <laughs> yeah, not really, but I mean, it just seems cool. Um, but yeah, I was. Well, really I mean, why put it in if? You're not going to be able to use it, right? Yeah. I just love the longevity they're giving this game. And maybe maybe they're saying, hey, there won't be any major changes like, you know, turning the subway on like they did with 2.1, which was, which was really cool. Um, yeah. But maybe we'll still see, you know, quality of life fixes and just whatever it takes to, to keep it going until we get the new version, whatever that may be. 
but uh, I got to hand it to him. I've said it more than a thousand times already. CD Projekt Red definitely got a uh, got a model to work with here. We'll see how I long agree. It but I think I think they they need to stick to the working formula. You know the the amount of time that was spent on like The Witcher Three, the amount of time that was spent on this. Don't go with the the usual format, which is okay. We have this. Let's just transfer as many assets as we can over to the new game and yeah. do a lot of the similar stuff. Give right. it breathe some life into it, right? Well, I wonder now with uh, I I assume the the more finances they have if they can't have enough more you know more uh, staff on hand to give them th their desired goals in a, in a better time frame because obviously you know they they're known for taking the fuck a long time <laughs> yeah. it was well worth what we got at the time and it was still broke as fuck but it was still cool man yeah. And uh, they didn't stop till they got it right and, and, are, and are still doing it. So if they've got the manpower now, who's to say that they couldn't churn this stuff out a lot quicker and get these cool ideas out in a more timely Maybe. fashion? hope so, man. I mean, dude, I, I think you can take the Elon Musk approach to anything. You throw enough manpower at it, you can get shit done quickly. It's only a matter of what stands in your way and getting that stuff out of your way that, that holds you up. Money talks. Yeah, but then on the flip side of that, you got to be a badass company and stay a badass company. Because the minute you falter, then falters are waiting. Yeah, yeah, that's it, dude. Like uh, Steam, uh, Valve's a good example of that, man. They need they need a big win right now. I think they're kind of losing like their identity, like. I don't even think you think of Valve much anymore for much of anything. You, you're, you're constantly talking about Steam, obviously. If you're, And see, I stay pretty much off Steam, dude. I don't even really need Steam. I'm kind of an Epic guy myself. Uh, I, I mix it up with Epic and Amazon Prime because I have an Amazon Prime account. Um, yeah. And that's where I get a lot of my freebies from and whatnot. Um, but, you know, the Steam Deck is still... An impressive thing, right? Very good point, sir. I did not consider the Steam Deck. Very good point. That is a win. Definitely a yeah. win. It, it has uh, has been one of the few handhelds that have done well. Of course, now you got you got people on their heels with much better handhelds doing cooler shit. So yeah, it, it remains to be seen how long they'll hold. So yeah, you're right though. At least it gives them something new. But they're gonna have to. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm leaning more towards the software side of things. Yeah, I, I mean, they've done a lot as far as for Linux gaming, you know. But, you know, let's have a Half-Life 3 or something. I'm not even a Half-Life guy. I mean, I played that one right. back in the day, and I almost finished it, and there was a bug that kept me from finishing, and I never got to finish it, and I was so pissed. Never played the second one. Um, it's more it's than super high popular. time. An original IP, though, right? Yeah, and it's more than high time, and you can't tell me he couldn't get the people to finish it, dude. Right. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on there, dude. I know he has a philosophy of what the fuck ever, I guess, but uh, anyway, yeah, I'm not really a Steam guy, man, but I, th I think uh, I think they're important, definitely. I agree. And yeah. they need to they need to stay they need to stay out in the forefront for sure. Well, also, the whole backbone of Steam is the community, right? That's yeah. Um, that's what makes Steam different. And uh, I don't know. I feel like the community is still there. They're still doing the same thing that they've been doing. Yeah. Um, so as long as people pushing stuff down the pipeline can live up, then I, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, but right. yeah. it's not happening, right? Right now? It's not. It doesn't seem to be. But maybe you're right, though. I mean, maybe the longevity is there. But I don't think they can milk it forever. We'll see. Yeah, time will tell. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, I saw something funny as shit. Uh, I think it was this morning. It may have been yesterday. 
I saw uh, uh, one of the little YouTube thumbnails for one of Linus's videos, and it had the hollow floor. Oh, yeah. For which we've already <laughs> covered exclusively. Already got Not there, guy. Yeah, we... <laughs> I felt, you know, I did feel kind of good about it. I'm like, ha ha, we beat you right. out of that one, buddy. Um, but it's it's cool because it's that it's going to get it more and more exposure. But it's interesting after I've done that video, all of a sudden, so I, I've seen the movie Ready Player One, and I knew it was in there, but I never really knew it was a real deal. You know, yeah. I talked about the omnidirectional treadmill idea I had. Just I don't know, you know, like I'm ever going to get anything invented but i still have ideas and uh you know somebody already made one and uh infinity deck was the one they made for that movie and i saw yeah. another video where this guy got a chance to go and check it out and shit and it's you know it's a pretty neat idea the hollow floor is a way better idea but i like that this kind of thing's out there uh it further props up this i guess this crusade i'm on now to have holodecks be a thing that you can go to and enjoy. Well, again, I, I'm going to go back to what I said when we were first talking about it was uh, movie magic, man. There, there are a lot of unanswered questions, right? Like how much weight does that thing support? We, we saw like how, how, somewhat how it works, but... Are we talking about uh, the hollow Mr. floor? Smith, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Smoot was very intentional in his actions on that thing, right? Like well, you could I mean, see it. they had him on that chair moving around uh, in the thing. They had it separated to where two people, could, you know, were doing like a back-to-back -back thing. Uh, right. So, I don't know, man. It seemed like it, just for, I'm talking about version one of the holodeck, it seemed like a damn good starting point. We'll see. For sure. Uh, I, I like what I saw, but, uh, you know, I was, because, I was very critically eyeing it. Yeah, because <laughs> what I see is those little discs that, that move everybody around getting smaller, tinier, and more of them to where, mm -hmm. like, the whole fucking floor is is just, you can't even tell. You're just walking around, and you can't even tell that the floor is doing what it has to do to move, you know, to adjust to you or whatever. But I think, man, the tech is here. It's just a matter of getting all the right bits and bobs together. You know, the best projector. Or how do you, you know, how do you bring it to their vision? Is it projectors? Is it in goggles? Or, you know, you know, who's your floor? Is it going to be these guys just had, you know, I don't know how big they could make a floor if they really put their minds to it. Like yeah. if you did a whole room. Uh, to me, their idea, their idea is only good for a single person, in my opinion. Maybe two. You might can make it. Well, no. I wouldn't do it for you because the way theirs works is it it has the regular treadmill, you know, front to back that can move. And then they have strips that go across it that can move you that way. So right. I think that one's a lot more limited than the hollow floor for sure. And it would get you again, if we're talking holodeck version one, it would get you there. But I, the hollow floor is way more because you could just walk out if you wanted to and and you know it could bring you you could stop and it could bring you back in because that's the, that's the thing about the holodecks in star trek like you're just basically in the middle of the room you you very rarely get close enough to the wall you know to yeah well touch we the wall. we've all seen the holodeck without anything on it and it's not that big of a room right yeah right exactly so that's what i'm saying like you got four of those in a fucking like old movie theater because you know these old movie theaters are everywhere man you got to fill them with something why not make it a fucking holodeck suite but uh, yeah, so I don't know, man. Somebody's going to steal the idea. Somebody's going to run with it. And eventually, this is going to be a big thing. So just remember, you heard it here first, kids. And, and Linus is all over that hollow floor now. So yeah, uh, yeah. I think I'm on to something, man. Maybe. We'll get something started here. Get the right people talking to each other, man. All it takes is money, man. Money. <laughs> is that all? <laughs> yeah, well, that's it, dude. You finally listen. Let's just say, Mar this is just a, okay, huge fucking hypothetical. Let's just say somebody like Mark Cuban or something like that saw this podcast and said, man, this guy's really passionate about holiday. He fucking somehow gets in touch with us and says, bro, you sound like you're really passionate about this thing. I'm going to give you just shit tons of money and you figure out how you can make version one of the holodeck thing happen. And I guess that's kind of how things would could go. I mean, you know, one possibility. It just, yeah. I mean, because, dude, 
you know, maybe 20 years ago, that idea would sound really stupid. But now we have these kind of guys with money that, that do stuff like that. The Elon Musk, the Mark Cubans and stuff. They're, they're just like, fuck it. Let's see what we can do with something, you know? Because they're like, hey, I kind of see where they're going. It's an idea. It's a cool idea. Holodecks are definitely a fucking cool idea that I did not think of. I just think it needs to happen now. I think we have the tech. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know that anything's really going to happen that way that you put forth. They they kind of operate a little bit differently about it, but there is the money out there for it, and there's obviously interest, right? Yeah. Oh, if yeah. You're not the only one. Yeah. It's just it's just a matter of connecting to the right people and finding you know who who needs because uh, these videos start popping up. I mean, like there's way more tech out there than even I'm aware of. And, you know, there's probably people that don't even know other people are doing things. And that's the kind of people you want to get talking to each other. And so, okay, imagine if you could build a holodeck. Where would we do it? Where would we start? And then that's how, you, you know, well, you have an unlimited amount of money. Wouldn't right. that be cool? Fucking A. <laughs> Fucking A. America. <laughs> ah. Oh, raw. Well, all righty then, man. So uh, that's about all I got. You anything you want to add to this week's episode? Not really, man. Um, I don't know if you caught Bobby on uh, JRE. I did. Good old Bobby Lee. I sure did. Yes, indeed. I don't know. I'm 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 Camp Bobby these days. I think you know that <laughs> joke kept on his usual rant that that he usually has on every podcast, and Bobby was just like. Aren't there people out there who just live their lives and are happier because <laughs> they're not drawn in all this? Yeah. And uh I, I kinda want to be more like that. Yeah. He seemed he seemed timid at times to me. You could hear it in his voice. I thought, man, he's got kind of a like he was well, very because at times. He's that way. He you know, the obviously he I don't think he and Joe have been as, as close while you know, Tiger Belly was going on as they had been in previous times, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and this was kind of like a a, a great uh, reunion, rekindling of yeah. a bromance, right? Right, right. right, right. And, and sometimes you have that friend who is just really strong in their opinions, and you're just kind of like, "Hey, dude, I'm I'm here to promote a movie. Let's hang out if we can." But. <laughs> Yeah, you're bringing me know. down. I don't know. I didn't catch. I didn't get that kind of vibe from it, man. I think. I don't know. I think you're. I don't want to say you're putting more onto it, but I didn't. I didn't think he was that fucking. I thought they just had a regular conversation. Well, no. I mean, I thought. I, he, I th in fact, I thought he agreed with Joe on a lot of things. I I think he does, but at the same time, you know, he it it seemed like. Bobby wanted to talk more about, obviously he was p promoting a movie, which I think he says he had like four scenes in or something. Um, but, you know, he, it, it really seemed like he didn't want to get into the politics on the air. And, and maybe that's just, you know, protecting your character, right? It's like, Hey, I, you know, I don't want to be associated with like a political agenda or something. I'm a comedian. It doesn't matter. You know, maybe there was something like that, or maybe he does believe differently. I don't know. Um, yeah. but, you know, Joe always pushes his, you know, his, uh, I don't want to call it agenda. I wouldn't say but, pushing. I would just say he's just speaking about, he's just, he's, he's hosting a show. He's talking about what he believes. I don't know if that's pushing it. He's just saying what Well, he yeah, thinks. but it always winds up there, right? It always well, winds it's up. Show. Yeah, I mean, I guess so. Uh, yeah. I don't remember how how it exactly started, and they got on the conversation, so I can't say how that developed. Uh, but I think it had a lot to do with, uh, you know, he spent a lot of the interview also saying, like, you should move here, man. Well, yeah, I was just about to say, like, he's trying to get everybody to move there. And in that way, yeah, I agree. He's pushing it, but he's, it's because he's excited about it, dude. Uh, he's lived in fucking California. And I was, and I was going to say, Bobby sounds scared to me because he still has to live in California and he's got to go back and live with those fuckers. And he don't want to say the wrong thing and have to deal with that backlash. And that's one reason Joe's so excited and trying to get all his friends over because he's like, dude, you come over here. They're not nearly as fucking crazy. There's still some blue over here. It's not so bad. 
and the taxes aren't that bad and shit like that, you know, whatever he's saying. And, you know, maybe that's the difference in why he sounded like he was scared. I don't know. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm just, I'm just with him, you know, live your life, you know, don't worry about all this stuff that people are trying, trying to feed you. Yeah, no doubt. Well, unfortunately, Pepper has come down here and started bugging me. So right, right. yeah, not cool. Not cool. I wanted to leave her in the other room, but she, uh, insisted on coming in here and I said, you gotta be quiet. She has been kind of quiet. I mean, you haven't heard her, but. I haven't. I've, I've seen her here. move around a bit, but you know yeah. she's in the background. It's all good. Yeah, she now she's whining again, like she wants something. Get off, man. Get off. Anyway, well, so, she's telling telling you it's time to end the show. I guess yes, right. She is. She is. <laughs> she is. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. And as always, be excellent to each other. And Brian and I will see you on the flip side. Thank you Thanks, so much. Everybody. Yeah. Peace.